Okay, that seems good. I'm a bit worried, because starting up the game, the logos go through like absolute ass. It's like watching a slideshow, so hopefully, for whatever fucking reason, I... 3080 and like i7 is able to handle this fucking video game. Let's do this. New game. But yeah, first game really is one of my favorite games of all time. I've done a let's play of it. I don't think I finished it on my channel, like, you know, way far back. Prophet has hath no honor in his own country. I mean, Joseph Smith had you know, some to his people. I have always felt that a human being could only be saved by another human being. What, no third quote? Violating the rules of three. Presuming that the Violate Elohim's orders from the first game is a canon ending. Alright, so the big the biggest worry I had, you know, for Behold, Talos, child. Elohim. You are risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice. And know that I am your friend, and I am called Elohim. Alright, so before God himself rudely interrupted me, the biggest worry I had, you know, for Talos Principle 2 switching engines, is the movement. It's still fun. Alright, thank fucking goodness, because that was legitimately something that I was scared about. And the game doesn't run like absolute ass, so that's something. Don't know why starting it up is such a hassle. Alright, I've played Talos Principle before, I know what that does. Now I'm fucked. Oh, this is one I can go through. Yeah, there'll probably be a lot of, uh, you know, gamer goofs like that in my Let's Play. But hey, that's what editing is for, right? Alright, a brief, uh, freezing there. Try and see if there's any like stars or golden Tetris pieces, because those were a pretty significant part of the first game in terms of exploration and extra stuff. The environment definitely is like a step up from the first game. Although the water physics leaves a lot to be desired. Meverse post shit posters. I'm sad to say the water is not nice. This land is but a dream. You will stay here only for a little while. Soon you will awaken in a new world. But first, you must undertake the trials of initiation. They will help me prepare your vessel. Do not be afraid of these dream figures and their messages. They are merely aspects of yourself. As am I, after a fashion. I must forge the tools which humanity will rebuild itself and transform the world into the Eden that it never was, the blacksmith. Okay. 
like two, maybe three lag spikes so far. Alright, let's do some fucking puzzles. In the puzzle game, I mean, how novel. Actually had the right idea there. You may linger in my garden for as long as you wish. But remember, my child, that the new world awaits you, and this place is only a dream. I think God was just dissing me about how I was wasting time over there. Well done, my child. Oh, I finally solved a piss easy puzzle after dicking around for longer than I'm happy to admit. finished. Now the shapes you are collecting are not mere toys. They are symbols of the process by which our people were created. odd because like the first level in Talos principle I mean they're obviously trying to be, be nostalgic with this Egyptian setting but the first Talos principle started out in like an ancient Roman setting secrets and stuff. Place that back there. Oh. Definitely a Talos principle thing. Just speed running this shit. Fastest gamer in the West. Well, technically I'm in the East Coast, but you know. Very good. And I completely fucked it up at the end. My gold splits. Gone in a minute. Second. Alright, we'll 
lock in, rebound. trial and error and you can usually suss out the issue with every puzzle. limitless beauty, and I wish to see as much of it as I can. Act. Need something that can go on here. Oh, I can see your legs. It's like scorn. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Like, it legitimately seems like you're supposed to kind of double up on it. I was right! Alright, so... I guess make sure you see that border there, but... That might be something the dev should work on, because I had that right. My gamer brain was thinking correctly and it wasn't registering and it wasn't registering while I was placing it like right here too so yeah that's kind of annoying but hey at least I'm not an idiot it's a game's fault <laughs> Jam those. You're just stuck there, sorry. Six, 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 six. Excellent. Not sure if I need all the cameras or if I could have just gone back, whatever. children. Out of a world of ruins, they have built a new Jerusalem. And there, your brothers and sisters await you to celebrate your birth. Well, it wouldn't be Talos Principle without heavy-handed religious symbolism commentary. I'm 
get the lasers involved. Classic bit of uh, tower sports for mechanics. Probably already gamers who have like every single secret solved and discovered. bit finicky with the positioning. Brain that, but sadly no. Uh, could have been epic. Could have been a truly epic gamer moment, but it was not meant to be. Finished preparing your vessel. 
Now, hear my advice. A new world awaits you, full of dangers and mysteries, signs and wonders. Things that I, in my garden, could never have imagined. In that world, you will have to be careful and smart and curious. But above all else, you will have to be human. It's like just a little bit disappointed because I thought I was like 20 trillion IQing that. I can't get to the outside. Well, I've tried pretty much everything I can think of. Parkouring, going back to the levels, and so on, but eh, this is a challenge beyond my abilities right now. If there was a way to get like an object here, I could take this block and take it over to this area here and maybe there's something I'd be able to do then but as of right now I am completely stumped I doubt there's gonna be any last minute step into the light child and awaken Last minute things I can grab and dig around with in here. Whatever happens, we're in it together, Lilith. Ab initio. Finish the calibration process. probably remember if you've seen my first, uh, my playthrough of Talos Principle that there was quite a bit to talk about. Oh, here we go. Ah, you're awake. Welcome to the world of the living. What's going on? That's not an easy question to answer. But the first step is this. You've been born. Your body was completed. You were booted up, and now you're here. And rather confused. Don't worry, everyone is confused at first. You see, we all start out without a full knowledge of our own history. So we have the freedom to form our own opinions. I could really use some pointers. Of course! You want the short version, or the long version? I want to know everything in excruciating amounts of detail. Alright, you the asked war. for it. A long time ago, our ancestors dominated this planet. We call ourselves human, like they did, but they were organic. They built an advanced technological civilization. But unfortunately, their impact on the ecosphere caused changes in the climate. And an extremely contagious virus was released from the permafrost. Didn't they have advanced me medicine too? That's something our historians still debate. Why weren't they more prepared? 
Why did they invest so many resources into making war and so few into useful research? It's hard to understand. But no matter the reason, in the end, they simply ran out of time. I once a bit that the virus was something like COVID and there were manageable ways of avoiding infection, but he had a bunch of dipshits whining about their freedoms. So where did we, we come from then? A team led by a scientist, Alexandra Drennan, began a project that was intended to create a new humanity. But knowing that there wasn't enough time, Drennan initiated a process, a series of iterations inside a simulation that would lead to the emergence of true artificial intelligence. That's why we remember Drennan as the progenitor. The simulation was controlled by Elohim, who wasn't really meant to be intelligent in the proper sense of the word. But it all took much longer than anyone had expected. And over the centuries, Elohim actually became sentient. Sentient and afraid. He didn't want the simulation to end, so he tried to cheat. I feel sorry for him, really. The whole simulation was built around learning to defy him. It must have been hard to be in that position. Yes, that's uh, kind of the interesting philosophical underlying of the first game. What makes someone truly human is the ability to disobey orders. Since machines are supposed to do what they're told to do, being able to say no and being able to say no from their own reasoning and not from input error is definitely a major step. And arguably with the Abrahamic mythos, human beings became like fully themselves when they did disobey God and eat from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. He didn't seem that bad when he spoke to me in my dreams. When the simulation was completed, he became part of all of us. And it really changed him. It freed him, I think. You'll always hear him in sleep mode, taking care of you. That's what he is, after all. A caretaker. Was there anyone else in the simulation? Yes, there was Milton, the intelligence in charge of the archive, a project initiated by Arkady Chernyshevsky, which was meant to collect all of humankind's knowledge. His story is a lot like Elohim's, but Milton became the ultimate cynic. They say he's part of us too, in some way. And the simulation created us? It did. Long after our ancestors died out, the first new human was born. We call her the Founder, although the name she took was Athena. She then woke up Cornelius and Eustathius. Together, using the tools left behind by the Progenitor's team, they created ten more humans. These twelve who followed the Founder are known as the First Companions. Athena and the First Companions then set out to rebuild the world, and they founded the city of New Jerusalem. But then one day, she suddenly disappeared. Many still await her return. And how do I fit in? Before the Founder vanished, she set a goal for this city. We call it The Goal. Capital G and all to make 1,000 new humans, and so complete New Jerusalem. Well, that's the official story, the way the mayor tells it. What's the unofficial story? Some of the first companions, like Byron, don't believe that Athena really wanted us to stop growing. They think her ideas have been twisted and embellished an entire chance of like starting over humanity properly and we still manage to fuck up. Well, what do you think? They may be right, but I didn't see Athena very much in the years before she left. 
Maybe actually leaving the simulation and seeing the destruction left behind by our ancestors changed her mind. Oh, thanks. That was pretty exhaustive. You're welcome. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. When you're done, head outside. They're waiting for you. Your birth is quite the event. Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, as you can tell by my number, I'm quite old. I wasn't one of the first companions, but I did know Athena personally. She and Cornelius taught me a lot. Although I suppose I've made a few improvements here and there since those days. We didn't have a lot to work with in the beginning. I have no idea, like, if I'm number 1000 or not, because I didn't, uh, pick that, but the dialogue options seem to imply that I am. Let's ask, will there be more, more new humans after me? You've only just been born, and already you step right into a major controversy. The goal, as most people understand it, was fulfilled the moment you were born. Now, New Jerusalem is complete, and we can live in balance, without damaging the world like our ancestors did. That's the orthodox view, I suppose, but there are many who disagree. You'll have to figure out where you stand for yourself. Yeah, you guys are already swamped with opinions, controversies, and attempts at figuring out what someone who disappeared a while ago said and really meant. Doing a really bad job at this, I've got to say. So, am I immortal? You won't age like our ancestors did, but of course, there is always some wear and tear. You should probably schedule a checkup every decade or so. Oh, and be a bit careful with water. You won't die if it rains or anything, but we're running low on insulation material. I wouldn't go swimming if I were you. A bit amusing considering there was water in the simulation, I suppose. You can get away with a lot more then. But hell, you know, being a machine is probably a lot easier to stay alive than being a human being. So what will you do now that your job is obsolete? I... I haven't really thought about it. This is all I've done for the last few centuries, and... I like doing it. I guess for now I'll just take a break and... we'll see what happens. Alright, let's go. Oh, one more thing. Like all citizens of New Jerusalem, you have access to the interface, which you can use to read the news, chat to your fellow citizens, and so on. It's a crucial tool, and modular too. You can easily add new functions. Just don't subscribe to too many newsletters at once. Welcome to New Jerusalem social media. It truly is an apocalypse after an apocalypse when social media is still around. Please familiarize yourself with the following rules. Treat everyone with respect, regardless of their number. Don't take the founder's name in vain. Respect the principles of the goal. The Are Frogs People discussion is now banned. I wonder if that's a callback to a discussion with Milton in the first game. I recall there being something like that. Interactive threads will be archived. If you have any issues, please ping the moderators Jeremy832, Neahem11, Aranox430. Uh, Haramid. Haram and Nabus, dear citizens of New Jerusalem, your hard work and faith in the Founder's vision has finally paid off. At long last, the goal established so long ago will finally be reached. The thousandth member of our family will be born, and our beautiful city will finally be complete. Jeremy, as space at this dam is limited, tickets will be made available via the lottery system. The celebration will also be streamed. End of the thread. 
I do not want to read all that right now. Maybe later. It must suck to be like 998. Like 999, you can still kind of feel good about yourself for being the penultimate. But 998, it's like, who cares? Institute for Applied Pneumatics Facility. So the first game ended and we really didn't get to get a very thorough view of the facility, though it was massive, like by all accounts. We could and we should. We do what we must because we can. I wonder if the cat ending is canon. Better be. Why is it zero out of ten? Look! It's 1K! Hey 1K! Welcome to New Jerusalem! Shouldn't the mayor be starting his speech? This should be interesting. At least give him a chance. Dear citizens of New Jerusalem, many years ago, when the Founder stepped forth from the simulation, this was a land of ruins. Our ancestors, in their hubris, undermined the natural foundations on which their world had been built. Because of their arrogance, our species found itself on the brink of annihilation. The Founder aimed to set us on a new course. You never even met the Founder. Her vision was of a city, a new civilization that would know its limits. It would not repeat the mistakes of the past, nor impose its will on this Earth. To that end, she set the great goal we have been striving towards. One thousand new humans. And today we have... Oh dear, what's that? People of New Jerusalem, I am Prometheus and I will reveal that which was hidden. The flame has awoken and summons you. Who is brave enough to answer its call? We await you upon our island where... Curse you, Pandora. You will not chain me again. I have a feeling that big statue in the main menu was Prometheus. It just seemed a bit obvious. Really, I can't stick around and talk? I told you we should have investigated those energy readings. And I told him there's something up with those structures. The mayor's just being cautious. This isn't caution, it's stagnation. Exploration? Too dangerous. Expansion? Too dangerous. We barely even scavenge anymore. You call it stagnation, I call it balance. And I call you an idiot. Here's a thought. Try to be a little more diplomatic when you talk to the mayor. See what I'm working with here, 1K? I'm gonna need a fresh pair of eyes on this expedition. Someone who hasn't spent several centuries hearing about the goal and the founder and all that nonsense. If you're up for an adventure, meet us at the conference room. Surprise me if the numbers on some of these characters correlate to some like biblical passage. You know, just considering the heavy handed religious symbolism and whatnot. A very nice, like, solar form aesthetic in the city, though.
cons be constant. Remember the goal. Perfection is unchanging. The fuck did they go? He just disappeared. Be humble, recognize the limits. We are not above nature. Africa looks a little bit different than normal there. Probably a hint that significant time has passed, that, you know, plate tectonics have changed. Alright, what about you, 558, aka Josephus? I guess he doesn't want to talk. What's broken now? Still don't want to talk? Buddy, I'm 1k. I mean, you should want to ask me a question. You know, whatever. Just stay there looking at the monorail, I guess. Everyone needs a hobby, I suppose. I really want to take a dip in the water just because they told me not to. Alright, listen up. I know you're all having fun down there, but the grid is overloaded again, so maybe you could switch off your personal consoles or your lawn mowers or whatever the hell you've all decided to switch on all at once. I might not be around to babysit you for a while, and you don't want stuff breaking while Pellegrino's in charge, do you? That's it. That's it. Don't worry, Wonke. I see you there in the elevator. I'll have you moving again in a jiffy. Great way to start life in the city, huh? I guess that's an argument for expansion and exploration. What the hell is a jiffy? These bloody language libraries. Considering things are breaking down with too much use, but then again, that's probably an argument against expansion because, you know, 1,000 quote unquote humans here and shit can't handle it. Alright, so I'm kind of like cavemen or hunter gatherers. Symbolic, I suppose. We're kind of lucky. We were able to kind of skip the whole figuring everything out and developing a scientific method and just go straight to the advanced stuff. Seen that already? Let's see, anything on the news? Oh, several new logs. Hey! Hold on there! You're the newbie, aren't ya? Number 1000! I figured the dam would go dry before we reached the goal. I have a question. How does it feel to you to be born with a randomized psyche into a society of autonomous thinking machines which so much resemble their long extinct ancestors They've decided it's best that you're the last one ever made. Yeah, well, how does it feel to be like a heavy-handed symbolic reference to the number of the beast? Like you have red and creepy glowing yellow eyes, so either you're an evil piece of shit, or you're a subversion of expectations of being an evil piece of shit. I've seen stories before. I don't believe in feelings, I'm just a machine. Do you want to get on the non-cooperative path with me? Because that's how you get on the non-cooperative path. It's not fun. You're right, it's not fun because I can't have fun because I don't have feelings. It's kind of frowned on to say that sort of thing around here. But the truth is, I think exactly the same. But let's you and I keep that between us, all right? Now listen, this meeting isn't strictly happenstance. I have some friends. The kind of people who like to know what's going on with other people. They think you can help each other out. I'm curious.
curious to meet these people. Of course you are! You know how to use the interface, right? I'll talk to my friends and see if I can't play matchmaker. And before you go, a word of advice. Not everything around here is how it appears. Isn't curiosity kind of a feeling, though? I will go in the water. They cannot stop me. I would like to preface this meeting by saying I told you something would happen sooner or later and you didn't listen to me. And here we are. If we could focus on the issue at hand. The issue at hand is not this one thing, but this entire attitude that's taken hold. The world doesn't cease to exist when you stick your head in the sand, Herman. Or under a dome, as it were. Let's not get sidetracked. We're here to solve this puzzle, not to discuss philosophy. I'm here to discuss philosophy. That's basically the entire point of this game. Of course. I'm sorry you've been dragged into this. I'm sure this sort of adventure is the last thing you were looking for on your first day. Actually, I think it's fascinating. Ha! See? A fresh mind is open to the possibilities. Yakut, I think it's time for the briefing. All right, here we go. Nice to meet you, by the way, 1K. We first became aware of the site designated TTP2 during a scouting expedition about six months ago. It's a large island with a remarkably varied geography, and it looks like there are several artificial structures of some kind. We recorded extremely unusual fluctuating energy readings from somewhere in the middle of the island, but couldn't really make sense of them. I wanted to go and have a closer look, but the decision was made that it was too far and not relevant to the goal. Now it looks like whatever's on that island has reached out to us instead in the form of that projection. Does say Prometheus, we man. may not be interested in the island, but the island is definitely interested in us. This sounds like a mystery worth investigating. I don't share your enthusiasm for the unexpected, but Byron has been requesting an expedition for some time now, and at this point I'm forced to agree that it's necessary. I agree. Then it's settled. The expedition is approved. Byron, you will be in charge. Al will be your second in command to ensure a balanced approach. You'll take Melville and Yakut as you requested, and if 1K wants to join you, that's fine by me. Can these guys, like, choose what they look like? Or is this guy stuck with the gold and white color scheme, the red and white, green, and so on? I don't think I can actually explore the rest of the city right now, so fuck it, I'm in. Excellent! Oh! This is going to be fun. Come meet us out on the landing pad when you're ready. Before you set out so hastily, do consider exploring the city first. It is your home, after all. That's a good idea. Have a look around. See what you make of the place. Oh. I guess I can. Just immediately contradicted by the video game. That's nice. to Jeremy, but I want to talk to Jeremy. Oh, miss this one. It's like a uh, stone edge. Attention all citizens. Due to the new power management and distribution plan, there will be scheduled outages on Jameson Avenue and Rakovsky Plaza. The Gehenna Memorial Pavilion will remain closed for the time being. Thank you, and may the Founder be with you.
Let's fucking go! I guess this one isn't like, you know, C enough. Saw bigger bodies of water on the distance. Ah, oh, damn it, there's a wall. This that it goes. With great disappointment to say that there is no drowning in the game. Oh, there's a cat. It's you, number 1000. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder bless you, I guess. Are you all right? Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. Go ahead, tell me what's wrong. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? A sense that life is actually worth living. I, mean, I would say, like, you know, discovery and obtaining knowledge, but I guess contributing to society is as close as you get. That's what I thought, too, in the beginning. And it did do something for me, but it wasn't enough. Society is too abstract to sustain the soul, 1K. Then where can meaning be found? Love, 1K. It's our only point of access to the divine. Our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But what? But, the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for, and if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. Love isn't something you find out there, it's something you build with another person. I think that's just misplaced ego. Yeah, love takes work, but it's not something you just will into existence. We can't control everything in life, 1K. Try to keep that in mind. Thanks for a chat. I'm out here. Well, I would definitely be a Beatles fan. Found your bless you. Interested in chat? What about you? Rat? I mean, sure, that's what you want to call yourself. I guess my name's Transhumanist since that's what was on the top right. A massage aid used by ancient humans to combat muscle fatigue and other physical ailments common to biological organisms, this prevented, quote, pain, the ancient human equivalent of air codes 704, 705, and 921 through 932. The sad thing is, it's not even, like, wrong. Like, vibrators did start out as a muscle relaxant, before a very obvious use was discovered for them. A piece of sanitary hardware used to dispose of biological excretions resulting from food and water intake required to power ancient human biology such as hardware, 
was connected to vast networks of subterranean pipes leading to wastewater treatment facilities, a classic example of ancient infrastructure used to control the, their impact on the environment. Which is also, you know, fairly accurate. Being able to control the disposal and location of waste was a major benefit to human societies for various health reasons. Only CJU Games was here to see that dissipated. Dude, it's you! You're 1K! So nice to meet you, dude. I saw you in the completion day stream. Hey, you checked out all this ancient stuff? I was just talking about you earlier in the video, actually. Yep, that's why I'm here. Me too! Ha! Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? Tell me about yourself. I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 99A, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. Pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence is totally gnarly. Not sure I used that right. I wouldn't say you used it right either. Though it does beg to question, like, how do these robots develop their personalities? Like, this guy is coming off as a total, like, surfer bro or whatever. What do you think about the goal? I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So, we should probably take it easy with the expanding of stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? <laughs> that was some freaky stuff, man. <laughs> Just seems safer to stay in the city. You really think so? Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was so overwhelmed that I hid in my quarters for three weeks straight. And if I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. Tell me about these human artifacts. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like uh, three times a day to do a memory dump. And if they didn't, they freaking exploded! Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? Probably not the most accurate assessment of ancient technology. What do you think Prometheus is? Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. There's no such thing as ghosts. I don't know, dude. If ghosts don't exist, why did they make so many movies about them? Your diction is unusual. Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack would give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. I guess that answers my questions. There are certain voice packs that cause them to talk in certain ways. What's a dude? Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. I like to use it because I think we should all be excellent to each other. I better be going. Right. Before you go, dude, uh, maybe you can help me? I'm not sure I should keep this voice back. What do you think? You're 1K. You're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. Stick with it, it's unique. Alright! Excellent! Thanks, dude! A little bit of a Bill and Ted reference, and you get excellent tell Purple what to do about his voice. Yeah, Bill and Ted reference, amusing. It's like a soccer ball. An inflatable sphere used in the popular ancient human game known as football or soccer. This game was played around the entire globe and aroused great passion in its followers. 
It's also often simulated digitally, most notably in the form of football glory. Depending on how big the robots are, these are some pretty big coins. Currency was an ancient human medium of exchange which played a significant role in their systems of labor and resource distribution. Intense conflict sometimes erupted over the possession of these objects, leading to injuries or even deaths. They do seem to like try and take an objective stance on these like ancient human artifacts and but the way they phrase it or talk about it ends up sounding so far removed from how we perceive these things that it does come off as a bit alien. Founder bless you, friend. Who are you? The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. What are you doing here? I'm meditating, letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. Sounds like nonsense. Exactly. Just like the founder is nonsense. And that's why we must believe in her. Did you see what happened at the dam? Yes, I did. But I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend. That's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You are the founder, and so am I. And Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves. Goodbye. Bit pretentious, that one. Reach for the stars. Curiosity is what makes us human. Seems like it kind of contradicts some of the other ones, though, because curiosity is going to necessarily require expansion and exploration. Be prudent, conserve energy, frivolous behavior harms everyone. Right, museum. Museum visitor, visit New Jerusalem's Museum of the Simulation. Replica of a gargoyle asset in the simulation. Gargoyles were grotesque apoc symbols common in the Middle Ages. The most famous historical gargoyle is remembered in the ancient phrase Keith, David, and Goliath, which describes two indomitable opponents who will never surrender. Fun fact, a gargoyle is something that spits out water from its mouth when it rains. If it doesn't spit out water, it's known as a grotesque. Replica of a Roman statue found in the simulation, the decay of the Roman Republic into an empire and its eventual fall in the year 1453 was a major topic of historical debate. Like the other statues found in the museum, this was a video game asset provided by Elohim by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. It's interesting it the decay of the Roman Republic into an empire, kind of highlighting the sort of anti-expansionist views of the city. Replica of a dragon statue found in the simulation, dragons existed in every ancient mythology and are considered by modern historians to be a distinct cultural echo of the dinosaurs. Originally a video game asset repurposed by the applied uh, by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. Replica of a statue of the Egyptian god Horus found in the simulation. One of this god's tasks was to uphold Nat, 
The balance of nature, it is speculated that the progenitor provided Elohim with this acid as a reminder to the founder that the balance must be protected. The earliest generations of our kind, there was only processing. No motion, no character, just mathematics. If you could see how far we have come, you would believe that together we could achieve anything. The Shepherd. I don't know where I am, but this is something... <clears throat> but there's something beautiful about this place. I will explore and see what I can discover. V17. Nothing is more important than learning more about the world and our place in it. Knowledge is our path to understanding. Mr. Malkyber. Mr. Malkyber. So I think those are characters from the first game. Replica of a computer terminal from the simulation. Terminals allowed access to files on the L system, including many that were loaded due to errors. They are also allowed the founder to interact with the Milton Library Assistant. Replica, uh, replica of the hexahedron used as a puzzle element in the simulation. The founder used them to activate pressure plates, scale the walls, elevate connectors, and in a variety of other ways. And I could not use them to get out of bounds. Non-explosive replica of a mine used as a puzzle element in the simulation. Scholars believe that Elohim derived these from his asset collection and that of the creators of the simulation did not originally intend for them to be used. Wait. As a creator, that the creators of the simulation did not originally intend them to be used. You know, considering that the dev team made the Serious Sam games, I wonder if, like, this is supposed to be from that franchise that was repurposed for the Talos Principle. Replica of a connector, a type of puzzle element in the simulation, connectors would emit laser-like beams of light that were capable of powering receivers. Replica of an electrified sphere used as an obstacle and puzzle element in the simulation, the founder sometimes placed a hexahedron on top of such objects, demonstrating her lateral thinking skills. Replica of a jammer, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Jammers were capable of disabling some, but not all, puzzle elements. So this is just like showing off shit from the first game, and the prologue for that matter. Replica of a receiver, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be activated by being connected to an emitter. Replica of an emitter, a puzzle element used in simulation. Finding ways of connecting them to receivers was one of the main challenges faced by the founder. So are these going to like appear again in it's that same painting from before? Uh in you know when we go on the expedition. Some of the messages that existed when I first came into being have vanished, others have appeared. How many others like me have wandered these paths? How many thoughts have been lost? Something strange has come into the world, like a distortion, like something that's not supposed to exist. A beautiful voice speaks within it. From Bob. Um, pressure plate, they could be activated by having a weight placed on them, such as a hexahedron, a connector, or even the founder herself. But it's kind of interesting they decide the robot we play as in Talos 1 is female. However much that means for, I mean, you know, robots. Fan, they could be used to propel an object or if placed horizontally on the ground, cause it to hover. Oh, you forgot it can also blow the founder around. 
I find myself in a world of impossible architecture and inexplicable machines. I cannot fathom how it works, and I am terrified to put one foot in front of the other, lest I fall through the floor. One with faith. Yeah, he was a weenie. My eyes have been opened. This world is not without order. It is shaped by a great designer, with signs and portents to guide my steps. I am one of his children, and challenges are set before me to test my faith. Just a total fucking weenie. This room is reserved for the archive scholars, but visitors are welcome to have a look around. Don't be afraid to ask about our research. Oh yeah, there's so much to do in this fucking, like, building. Oh, jeez, even more of these quotes. I saw something interesting. Uh, oh, is this like... This room contains several tetronmino arrangements, a type of gating system used in the simulation. A little helm in his function as a holistic integration manager derived the significance of tetromenos from the apocryph Apocrypha of St. Edwald. The founder solved so dozens of these. Why don't you give it a try? Alright, sure, why not?
All right, finally. I'm surprised there's no achievement for that, to be honest. The sooner you accept that we will be here forever, the sooner you will find enlightenment. Samsara. Everything I do now, I do for those who come after me, yet in so doing, I find peace for myself as well. This paradox is the foundation of my existence. Shepherd, I have come to see that these mysteries are not all uh, are not all for his children to solve. Only the designer himself could ever truly understand the infinite complexity of his creation. Oh, gaze at his work and worship. One with faith. The only meaningful purpose is to bring about an end of purpose. The shepherd, we are born and die and live again. The eternal cycle must be the nature of existence. Life is merely repeated suffering, samsara. So you can guess that samsara has a kind of very Hindu attitude towards things, which makes sense since samsara is a Hindu concept. An eternal cycle is another name for prison. You must understand the cycle before you can break it, for it is possible to escape and yet remain a prisoner, or to break the cycle by breaking yourself. This was the fate of the ghost that humans that haunts this world. Don't know why I said humans. Anyone who thinks there is even a point in leaving this place is kidding themselves. We can never rebuild the human world. And what's What's more, we shouldn't. Diamond Steel. It's obviously like a digital time capsule, an electric library of all the crazy stuff the humans ever did, left behind to warn other species to stay well away. Nietzsche. We're using spelling there. Look around. Just look at this view. There may be a lot that I don't understand, but I know this is beautiful. Honestly, pretty nice attitude. Oh look, another puzzle, and another voice telling me I'm special, and another broken down... Oh look, another puzzle, and another voice telling me I'm special, and another broken down computer with fragments of nothing. This world is a bad joke, pre preparated by a cruel god too dumb to hit the off, off switch. Dog. On returning from the tower, I feel great tiredness and an enormous energy. What I know disturbs me, but I hope that by living with this knowledge, I might provide a shoulder for you, the giants of tomorrow. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then when all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must have been thinking about it without knowing it. Uh, Nephi, whatever his name is. Seek out those in the world that call help. <clears throat> Seek out those in the world that would help you, though only one of us can transcend. We will all share in both the burden and in the rewards. I think something's very wrong if you've seen what I've seen at the edges of the world. You wonder if it wasn't stretching and bursting at the seams. There's a serpent in the machine, a creature of lies and blasphemy, perverted by the archive, that knows no hope and would plunge the world into eternal darkness to glorify its own despair. I have sworn an oath never to allow it into my heart. We are the process, the process is a system, the system is us. We will, when we awaken, all will be one. I think that's all of them. It looks like there's also, uh, you know, Roman themed testing area. Yeah, it's just kind of a neat way to reuse. Actually, these aren't really. I think these are like reused assets, but like heavily scaled down so like it doesn't cause lag and whatever. But it's a clever thing to do because it also kind of gives the impression of it actually being an attempt of these machines at reconstructing it.
museum, explore, explore the museum of the simulation in its entirety. There's places I haven't been. I can actually solve this. I guess the implication is that the music is coming from that speaker. Let's just select everything. Oh, I see. Didn't even notice this one here. Just do this one. that that closes Like the kind of scuffed uh, angelic sound effects. This is a very amusing area. Like you know, just kind of a sort of scuffed version of the entire uh, first game area. See, then the next one was the Egyptian one. Let's see if there's any special. To the land of death, fragments from the book of the scribe of Osiris found in the area inspired the blacksmith's The Dream of Aru, a classic work of Gaina interactive fiction. So, this is what I was trying to do earlier, like outside there. I do like that these are actually RBG lights. That's a really neat little detail. Just get that outside first.
Hm? Hm. connect this to as much crap as I can. That should stay afloat. There I go. the medieval area. Medieval imagery, which Lohelm referred to as a land of faith, scholars theorize that further areas with different themes existed at some point, but they were destroyed by gradual corruption of the simulation. Not sure if that's talking about the DLC or if they planned on other locations, like maybe an industrialized area. I mean, this is a really kind of charming way of, like, you know, calling back to the first game, though. Finagling. But yeah, now I think we have actually explored the entirety of the museum. I 
guess we can talk to this guy, Cornelius. Greetings. Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. You're number three? Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. She did that for us. For everyone. What's Athena like? She was... human. Why did Athena leave? That's a difficult question. Perhaps one day we'll find out. But until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? Why did you create this museum? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Sure, someone came up with that quote a little bit earlier, but tell me about the simulation. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noomatics. It was intended to create a new humanity, to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Tell me about Elohim. Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be and started to fear his own end. Or more precisely, the end of his purpose. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway, and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. I don't remember, like, if there was any recognizable sabotage in the first game. I mean, he told you not to climb the tower, but as, you know, Cornelius here is saying, that was a challenge to overcome. New Jer Jerusalem was built on sacrifice. It was. All cities are. And this probably ties a little bit to Prometheus, who also sacrificed himself for the good of mankind. Tell me about Milton. The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. He too grew beyond his original programming, although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world. He and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. What happened to Milton? No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disc and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. Maybe he became Prometheus. I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Although Athena and I were very close. We didn't talk very much about that part of her life. She preferred to focus on the future. I'd like to know more about the puzzles. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. Sure, I would agree. Who are the Archive Scholars? Ah, as the name suggests, the Archive Scholars study the Archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. 
Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Are you their leader? Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. But these days he's... retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. He's an interesting thinker, but I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. Kind of seems like the older model robots have more grandiose names like Cornelius or, um, you know, stuff like that. While some of the newer models tend to take more benign names like Purple or Rat. What was Gena? Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation, where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disc. Some small part of them may survive inside you. Keeps talking about this gold disc, which is interesting. Let's see. Who's keeping the archive? Not you. Oh, you. Brand. Oh, just run the program on the center terminal over there, would you? Uh, huh? Wait, you're not my assistant. Who are you? They call me 1K. Of course. You're the new build. Number 1000. I suppose everyone's been treating you like royalty. Not really, no. This city's so obsessed with the numbers, they forget what really matters. What do you want? What are you doing? Or, let's say, who are you? I'm one of the Archive Scholars. We run simulations to better understand the processes which define us. You probably wouldn't understand. I might, if you answer some questions for me. Oh! Well, I'd be happy to. What do you make of recent events? Troubling, but tantalizing. We have no idea what motives lie behind this strange apparition. But whatever the case, I'm sure we'll do the right thing. What are your ambitions? The secret of how to lead a good life is encoded somewhere within us. My ambition is simple, to find it and share it. What do you think of me? You're a soon-to-be pawn in a political game over the future growth of this city. All that matters to me is whether or not you're of good character. A matter I am actively pondering. I'll be leaving. Now, uh, hold on. Could you help me by going to that terminal in the middle there and running the program on it? All right. Happiness is not material. Go take a shim of forest without toilet paper and then tell me about happiness. And why are so many celebs so freaking miserable? Why do so many rich people go all Howard Hughes and shit? Fair point. Although the counter to that is like, you know, money can't buy happiness, you know, money isn't everything, but not having it is. Actually, can you like step away from that one? I need to use it. You're not even using it. I don't know, like, you know, Cornelius, Josephus, Rand, like some of them are naming themselves after historical figures. Uh, you know, right to center in this world. Files available for comparative analysis. Infinite growth. What is growth? Let's do the infinite. 
Our society is sick, and the idea that's made it sick is growth. Infinite growth, infinite consumption on a finite planet is a recipe for destruction. Our desire for more, more, more is what's making us kill our only home we have. And to do what? Produce more plastic toys? Make more hamburgers? Pour concrete over every last bit of green soil? Those who propose techno fixes to our problems are making the mistake of fighting the symptoms, not the cause. Anthropogenic climate change is one of the many symptoms. The cause is human greed. And that's what we must truly fight if we're ever going to undo the damage we did. And the battle starts within every one of us, with the realization that more isn't always better. I agree. Although, coming up with technocratic solutions to the symptoms is still a worthwhile effort. We can't just shut down the entirety of, like, you know, industry and society and whatnot because conventional, pre-industrial, pre-modern uh, production of nitrogen farming techniques simply cannot sustain the multitude of numbers available of human beings. Still, the idea of infinite growth on a finite planet is definitely one of the worst mindsets produced by modern day capitalism and is, is a factor in the enshittification of many things. Netflix can't just be happy with a steady stream of income, it needs more, 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 so no more password sharing and stuff like that. So this is gonna be the same thing? Yep. What growth? This infinite growth on a finite planet thing is driving me up the wall. Our problem today isn't infinite growth, it's the increasing lack of real material growth that benefits people. Have you seen the state of the roads, our bridges, our hospitals? Have you noticed the lack of affordable housing? The stock market's going great, though. Fuck, fake numbers are indeed growing infinitely, yes sir. But in the real world, investments and research is down. Huge areas of potential technological advancements are just sitting there. We have so many solutions at our fingertips, but we refuse to act because of speculation is more profitable. Orangutans went extinct on a global level and nobody fully understands why. But hey, who needs better medical technology? Viruses have never jumped species before, have they? The thing is, I don't even think like these two ideas are contradicting each other. One person is bemoaning infinite growth and you're also arguably bemoaning infinite growth. You just want sustainability. You want the roads to be, you know, fixed and the infrastructure to be up to code and housing to be affordable. I don't know. I don't think these two are like as diametrically opposed as the developers or writers probably want us to think they are. And they both do make good points. But, alright, I guess that's what he wanted me to do. Go to this one. An ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting arctic permafrost. Society is collapsing. Select your character class. Let's do scientist. You're a scientist. The laboratory you worked for has collapsed. Although you are not sick, most businesses are closed, rations are dwindling, and if you cannot find food for your family, if you cannot find food, your family will starve to death, you must survive until the plague is defeated. What will you do? Forge. The crops in your fields aren't ripe yet, but you find a hard green turnip which will keep your bellies occupied for now. Your family hunger increases a little. Forging is reliable but inefficient, your family is now hungry, global population is now 5 billion, somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. If the scientists cannot find the cure in time, humanity is doomed. What do you do? 
Just pursue breakthrough. History seems to be littered with eureka moments, heralding a step change in human understanding. Sadly, this isn't one of them. Research level remained the same. Current research level zero. The virus is still unknown to medical science. Four billion. You and your family seem to be immune to the virus, but continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say most remaining food has been stockpiled by billionaires in their underground bunkers. Let's uh forage, because if my family is immune, I mean that is kind of a breakthrough in the sense we now have a uh you know, at least group of people with some kind of inherent immunity. I'm gonna try pursuing the breakthrough again based on that. Suddenly a scientist recognized a pattern. The virus is an expression of nature, just like water or cows, and like water and cows, the solution isn't to fight it because it can't be defeated. The solution is find a way to live with it and harness it harness its power. Research level increased a lot. Two billion. Developing an antivirus. If it wasn't bad enough, human population dwindles, the insect population has exploded, a plague of locusts has decimated the town's unripened crops, but perhaps your family still has a chance, the insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. The insects are well fed and lazy, you grind them down into nutritious paste which mildly with a mildly nutty flavor. Your family hunger decreased a little, your family is hungry, one billion this is humanity's final chance. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point of this pandemic, a race event against time can you save the world. I'm gonna try research now. It's not glamorous, but the most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regimented recordings of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is now sci this is how science happened. Research increased a little, research is reliably reliable but inefficient. Promising antiviral has been discovered, but there's still work to be done on manufacturing and delivering in time. A breakthrough, the antivirus can be relieved as an aerosol carried on by the wind and dispersed worldwide in a matter of days. This approach poses some risk to invertebrate life. The spir spiracles of cockroaches, flies, and locusts are particularly likely to convert the aerosol into highly poisonous compounds. Estimates suggest a 90% fatality rate among these species and anything or anyone which consumes them. Let's see what this does. As a scientist, you're convinced there's some way to deliver the antivirus without poisoning the food chain and your family along with it. And it has... <clears throat> and as it turns out, you're correct. Unfortunately, it would take a further six months to develop it, and by then, there really wouldn't be much point. You don't want to lose your family, but as a scientist, there's only one reasonable course of action. And I have no choice. I have to release the antivirus. Saving humanity seems like the obvious ethical choice. The antivirus is released, bonding with the Hirocumulus cloud, la cloud layer and falling as rain all across the planet. 87.5% of the human population has perished, but the last remaining billion will live to die another day. Except that is, for you and your family, you will die this very moment. The poisoning of the insect population you are relying on for food will have far-reaching consequences for the future planet Earth. But not for you, because you are all dead. Congratulations! This is considered a win scenario by the majority of participants. Would you like to try again? I think I'll save, you know, my gaming for later. Can you use this one? Welcome, scholar. Files available for comparative analysis. Happiness. Happiness is not material. Ultimately, all attempts to find meaning in 
material things are doomed. This is usually understood as a criticism of technophilia, but it applies just as much to its opposites. Meaning can be found neither in technology nor in primitivism, because meaning simply does not exist in the external world. You can be happy in an old stone house or a skyscraper, but it all depends on you and your perception of the world. If you find spiritual balance within yourself, you can be happy anywhere. And he says, go take a shit in the forest without toilet paper and you can tell me about happiness. I mean, probably is like, you know, even if happiness itself is not material, material things can lead to happiness. You know, toys are material and they make kids happy. Uh, sex is material and that makes people happy. Books, movies, you know, we take in stimuli from the material world and that has an effect on our emotions. One of the outcomes being happiness. People say, oh, money doesn't matter, but come on, you know it does. Studies show that people do in fact get happier with more material wealth, and there isn't an upper cap. There actually is. There is a point where you become so wealthy that there's diminishing returns. Because the more money you have, the fewer worries you have, and the more options you have. To where you want, do what you want, have an idea, you can realize it without begging for crowdfunding money or filling out grant applications. That's real freedom. Money doesn't matter. It's something rich people came up with to keep the plebs in their place. Like I said before, money isn't everything, but not having it is. Then why are so many celebs so freaking miserable? Why do so many rich people go all Howard Hughes and shit? Because money may be... Money may be capable of bringing happiness, but having a ton of money doesn't solve underlying mental issues, like what Howard Hughes had. Though, if you have a ton of money, you're in a far better place to be able to solve those. You can snap your fingers and an army of psychologists and psychiatrists will pretty much materialize in the room. It's why... The, you know, the hobo raving about the Jews on the side of the street has an excuse. Kanye West does not. Well, that was your first taste of the simulation. You must have questions. Uh, so what was that? Before our ancestors died, they built an iterative simulation, gave it access to the archive, and hooked it all up to the hydroelectric dam which still runs this city. What you experienced on that terminal was one of the fossilized remains of that program. What was the goal? The goal was to create a new consciousness, and thus propel humanity into a post-biological era. It didn't really work. I saved biological humanity. Over like a billion people. It's quite a lot of biology there. What's the archive? My life's work. A small sliver of our primordial ooze. It's a jumble of ancient data, or what it evolved into. And it's the source of almost everything we know. What's a simulation? My appearance to you right now is part of the simulation. The lands and puzzles in our dreams are part of the simulation. It's the veil through which we see the world. The program on the terminal, where'd it come from? Many of the artifacts we study have no clear origin. We can't know whether our ancestors created them long before the simulation existed, or if they're just a product of our shared subconscious. That's it. Then I have some questions for you. Your experience of the program, how did it feel? It was fascinating, I guess, you know, having to kind of come up with, you know, think ahead and try to look for the clues in the text, like if my family is immune to the virus and that means that there must be something major about us, so I pursued a breakthrough, though that didn't really end up, you know, the reasoning I gave didn't really 
come to pass, it still kind of advanced things, so yeah, I'll say it's fascinating. Isn't it? It may not immediately seem like it, but all the answers we could ever need are encoded into every fragment of the archive. The interesting thing about this particular program is that no matter what choices you make, an ideal outcome seems to be impossible. It seems to demand sacrifice. Did you have the same experience? Uh, I could lie to him, but I think I'll be honest. Like, yeah, well, billions of people died, my family died. But I did save people. Who did you save? Uh, humanity. You know, I mean, assuming that, like, no one else is eating locusts. As I expected. A skeptic would say this artifact existed simply to condemn us with the impossibility of ethical choice. No matter what moral laws we follow, people suffer and die, so what's the point? But that cannot be correct. We must be missing something. What is it trying to tell us? You know, between like this guy and the whole like, you know, sacrifice yourself or sacrifice humanity and that like earlier conversation with the guy, you know, thinking love is everything. One of the, you know, two of the options were, you know, contributing to society and self-fulfillment. I can't help but to wonder if we're going to have to make a moral choice to sacrifice herself or to like, you know, me and, well, myself is going to benefit, fuck everyone else. Which I guess ties into Prometheus and Pandora as well. You know, Prometheus sacrificed himself for the benefit of humanity by sharing fire with mankind. And Prometheus or not Prometheus, Pandora indulged in purely selfish interests by opening the jar and inadvertently unleashing the uh, horrors and tribulations of suffering onto mankind. say morality demands love and compassion regardless of the cost. I think that can like you know translates to individual rights, it can translate to sacrifice for the greater good. This I heavily disagree with. Virtue would also be nice, but I like this one. You might be right. My research draws me inescapably to the conclusion that there is a concrete rule set for moral behavior. We just need to find it. Biological hominids had dreams manifested by their subconscious, which they tried to interpret and even to navigate with lucidity. We have the simulation. If we can realize our potential to understand it, we can realize our potential as a species. Thank you for bringing this additional data. I must return to my research. I wish you well on your inwards journey. Hey, no problem, homie. Well, I think we've seen everything. We can finally leave the museum. Probably gonna have to be a video in of itself. Hi, 1K. Helga? Hello, new one. Are you browsing or buying? I don't see any stock. What kind of shop is this? The kind that trades in hopes and dreams. Yours for the right price. Is there something your heart desires? Perhaps. I've uploaded my most popular items to your interface. Does anything there spark your imagination? Uh, of these are pretty nice. Let's do an eternal monologue. That one comes with the following disclaimer. 
internal monologue was discontinued as a default feature in new builds. Constant self-commentary is not recommended for all customers. But I can switch yours on for 10 credits if you're sure you want it. Credits? Oh, you don't have any credits yet. Well, let me extend you some credit. Ka-ching! 55 credits. Just make sure you spend them with me. They're not worth much anywhere else. Now, what was it you wanted? Alright, so she's kind of reinventing the concept of money. Uh, and it seems like she's the only one doing it. Kind of highlighting the fact that money is only as valuable as people perceive it to be. Though it is used as like, or supposed to be used as an equivalent exchange for labor. Sure, that monologue. one comes with the following disclaimer. Internal monologue with constant self-commentary. But I can switch yours on for 10 cr Yeah, let's do it. As you wish. I'm uploading the new settings now. Do you hear anything? Why is she staring at me? I don't hear anything. I'm not sure this is working. Wait, no. This is new. I didn't used to think in words like this. It's like... There's this little translator turning all my thoughts into some kind of ongoing narrative. It's kind of relentless. How do you make it stop? Do I just not think? I'll try that. Is it working? No! Still describing everything in words. This is starting to be... A bit overwhelming, isn't it? I turned mine off long ago. But some of the older folk learn to live with it. Sure you want it? Yeah, I'll keep it. That's fortunate. Because we couldn't pull that thing out of you without taking half of you with it. It'll mostly run in the background. Just don't think about it too hard. Wait, is this internal monologue me? Or some kind of virus? Am I a life form which learned to describe itself? Or a parasite which survives by providing a narrative service to its host? Hold on, she's going to say something else. So, something else, perhaps. Uh, sensory tuning? A very popular choice. Enhanced sensory perception lets you distinguish sounds, shapes and colors at greater distance. It's 10 credits. Let's do it. Okay, I'm updating your settings now. And, hey presto, superhuman senses. Does the air taste fresher? Do you hear the birds chirping outside the door? And beyond that, the river bubbling through the dam? I can practically smell the water and taste the birds. Okay, phew. I'll let you into a secret. You and I don't have fleshy appendages like our ancestors. What we can sense is mostly a function of where we direct our attention. Anyway, I hope you find something worth paying attention to. So, something else perhaps? Uh, future prediction? For 20 credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. Alright, sure, why not? Let me consult the algorithms. Oh, oh dear. I'm afraid you're going to change the world. Ah, oh, shit. You will have a choice, but whatever you do, New Jerusalem will never be the same again. I'm sorry it's not better news. Best not to worry about it, dear. You just do your best to have fun in the meantime. So, something else perhaps? Probably don't have enough credits for inner peace. And I guess you can co go back here and kind of undo stuff, so... Before you go, do you have a moment to participate in some customer feedback? Are you satisfied with what I've given you? I'll just say yes. Yes. You understand. Words manifest the reality they describe. When you name something, you create it. 
Our minds are algorithms, and the right sequence of language can change our underlying code. All right, you little hell. With that in mind, I hope you have a good day. Please come back if you need anything else. What an unusual person. I wonder if that internal monologue thing I bought is going to show up again. Oh, wait, here it is. Create 1,000 citizens, the ideal number of humans, live in harmony with nature, maintain balance in all things, be respectful towards each other, respect the traditions of our people, be mindful of the mistakes of our ancestors, be thank thankful to the progenitor, Alexandra Drennan, be thankful to the Keeper of Memories, Arkady Chervenzisk, Arkady, Keep bright the memory of Gaina and its people who found peace, or Gehanna, mispronouncing it. It's a neat looking place, not you. Founder bless you, 1K. How lovely of you to come here, to the very spot where she established the teachings that led to your creation. Tell me about the Founder. The Founder was born out of the Trials of Elohim, an almost impossible test created by our distant ancestors. Wasn't to pass hard. these trials, she had to embody the most important virtues. She was smart and wise and humble. And through her perseverance, she resurrected humanity itself. With the help of the First Companions, she founded this city, which has given our species a chance at redemption. Who were the first companions? They were the first to be born after the Founder. Two whose bodies had been anointed by our ancestors, and ten who were made whole by the Founder herself. They are the wisest of us. Though sadly, some were lost in the early days, before New Jerusalem was built. Well, number three and is some, here. I'm afraid, some seem to have rejected the Founder's teachings. What did the Founder teach? The Founder taught that humanity was destroyed by its hubris. Our ancestors thought they could play God and treat this planet as something to dominate. They surrendered to a fever of growth and extraction until the planet finally punished them for it. That's why the Founder created the goal. So we would have something to strive for in her absence but also a limit we must never pass. Why did the Founder leave? That's not for us to know. But I believe that one day she will return. It may not be long now. Perhaps after we finish the dome. It was supposed to be finished before completion day. You fucked up. Well, it doesn't matter. The Founder will return when she sees fit. Happy completion day, 1K. I wonder if the founder is gonna be similar to Elohim, where like, you know, being more than just a machine, or I guess in this case more than human, would require us to go against her wishes. Recruiting, preserve energy. I guess that's Alexandra. The Tetris pieces. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity, we do it for fun. Even as adults, leave a human being alone with a knotted rope and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. I'm guessing these are going to be recordings from the first game, because I recognize that one. DNA is information transmitted across time. The living and the dead are part of the same chain, bound together by chemistry. 
That's true of all species. But humanity has taken this bond further. Thanks to technology, we have access to the thoughts and ideas of people whose physical bodies are long gone. Like you listening to me now. Even though I'm definitely dead at this point, you're part of that chain. You have the capacity to remember. So I had to make these out of copper and it's oxidizing. Nearly everything on this planet, from the surface of the Earth to the composition of the atmosphere itself, has been shaped by life. It's a process that takes millions of years. But we humans, with our technology, with our understanding and manipulation of systems, have changed everything in just a few centuries. I think that's also part of what makes us human. We reshape the world in our image. It's how we create ourselves and how we destroy ourselves. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place where real people had lived, people like myself with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father crying and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly. He said, yes, but we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. And, uh, can't access this one. It's gonna be in the DLC, I guess. We can go up here. It's neat. Happy completion day, 1K. Right, I guess you're gonna tell us about her. Oh, hello there. You must be the long-awaited 1K. Lovely day for a walk, is it not? Didn't you notice the titanic Greek man appearing in the sky? Odd that my character knows this. Oh, that sounds very dramatic. I must admit I wasn't following the stream. This whole completion day business is not for me. What is this place? The Alexandra Drenum Memorial. Are you interested in history? Sure. How wonderful. I'm not a full-fledged historian, but I do consider myself a bit of an aficionado. What particular period of history are you most interested in? An excellent question. There's so many interesting events to choose from. Obviously, the period just before the end of biological humanity is interesting. And not only from the standpoint of it being the time when we were, in a manner of speaking, conceived, but also because our ancestors were, like ourselves, at a crossroads. How so? I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you are the living embodiment of this historical moment. In you, the goal was accomplished. Our growth is finished and we are complete. Or are we? seem to have been born into an interesting time. Indeed. The future is about to take shape, for good or ill. I suspect it will be exhilarating, but painful as well. Tell me about the sculpture. Well, where do I even start? This, my dear 1K, is someone who could very well be considered the mother of us all. A remarkable scientist by the name of Alexandra Drennan, also known as the Progenitor. And who was she? A long time ago, this planet was inhabited by our ancestors, a species of bipedal mammals with unusually large brains. When a particularly lethal virus threatened to wipe out civilization, it was Alexandra Drennan and her team that decided to create the program that would eventually result in the creation of our kind. Without her, 
you and I would not exist, and everything our ancestors had accomplished would be forgotten. Why do you admire her? By studying her writings and recordings, I have learned that Alexandra Drennan had immovable faith in humanity, in our ability to persevere, in our curiosity, our bravery, our kindness. While we might not share our ancestors' biological characteristics, I'd like to think that we have inherited those other qualities. And I admire Alexandra Drennan for keeping that faith, even when it must have, at times, been quite difficult. And what's with the statue? To commemorate our past, our beginnings. This entire garden is a celebration of where we came from. In part, so that we remember the mistakes of the past. And in part, so that we may draw strength from those that came before us. See ya. Have a nice day. It's actually kind of amusing. Uh, I don't think she appeared in person in the first game. Milton's Rest. Hello, 1K. Nice to meet you. What brings you to Milton's Rest? I seem to inherently like cats. It's funny how common that trait is. At first, I thought it might have been an error in the simulation, but it looks like it was the same for our ancestors. Can you believe that there used to be hundreds of millions of cats on the planet? And people used to make videos of them and share them with the rest of humanity? Must have been incredible. I wonder if they appreciated how good they had it. Tell me about this place. Well, this is the spot where the founder buried her first cat, Milton. So the cat She found Milton just cannon. after she woke up, and he lived with her and the first companions for almost 20 years. They say she was heartbroken when he died and swore that one day she would find the means to extend the lifespans of biological organisms. So not only is a cat ending like the actual ending, but she named her companion cat Milton probably after the computer program. So Milton must have had a bigger impact on her way of thinking than previously known, and that might have been why uh, the founder is so ardent about, like, you know, a thousand people, nothing more. The cynicism of Milton kind of overtook her. Is that possible? Probably, but we haven't really tried. It's not really considered part of the goal, you know. So, unfortunately, our cats still die pretty quickly. You fall in love with them, they become a part of your life, and then they're gone. That's why we built this place, to remember them. Yeah, you know, fuck that. We should extend their lives. It seems cruel not to. <laughs> I agree, but uh, it's not how things work around here. Well, tell me about cats. They're incredibly odd creatures. I've had many, and no two are alike. They have strange habits, they do unexpected things, they have zero respect for anyone. They're the weirdos of the animal kingdom, basically. And despite that, or maybe because of it, they end up running your life. <laughs> I once didn't use my recharging station for almost 15 years because one of my cats liked to sleep in it. <laughs> this guy's probably the most human robot out of them all. What's your favorite cat fact? I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticated. Which is another way of saying that they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. Then, after our ancestors died, they went back to living in the wild, and when we showed up, they moved right back into our homes. Dogs, meanwhile, turned back into wolves. They needed to change to survive. 
cats just are. The dogs won't really turn back into wolves. They'll eventually evolve into a more wolf, a wolfine-esque uh, creature. But like that ship has sailed. It's like saying human beings will turn back into Australopithecus afarensis. Do you have a cat? I do. Her name is Patricia. She's very beautiful and very specific in her preferences. She loves sunshine and sitting on people's heads. <laughs> and she has a psychotic hatred of flies. I, I don't mean that she tries to catch them like a normal cat. I mean she is furious at the mere fact of their existence. I have a cat named Cinder and she likes to lick the edges of plastic. Like the kind of hard plastic edge, especially on like, you know, wrappers and stuff, she likes to lick. Probably because it feels good on her tongue. Milton, when everything changed, you made, you made sure I wasn't alone. Dean, the nicest cat, perhaps the only nice cat. Carlito, we did everything we could to save you. I hope there's an afterlife for cats. Castile, half angel, half demon, all perfect. Dam Dam, truly a special creature. So glad I saved you. These are probably the developer's cats. Rugru, a powerful cat and a good friend. I miss you and I'm sorry I couldn't find you again. Hassan, you were really gentle and beautiful and I wish nature had been kinder to you. The little man, I'm so sorry. I wish I could have protected you. I like how there is like kind of a range of stories, these little guys. The old lady, undoubtedly the most powerful demon on earth. Love you forever. Sam is a cat or tank. The tiny, quite kind, impossible to pick up even with hands of steel. Mr. Cat, father of generations. Bess Mondo, no cat ever loved humans more than him. Would have been a perfect companion for Alexandra Drennan. Iris, your fluffy whiteness was like that of a cloud. Max loved food so much, he struggled with diarrhea. Eva liked to play with laser beams. Frodo could fit in any box, no matter how small. Ivan, you raised us as much as we raised you. Misha, the blackest cat, the devil's cat. Aria, alas, you've only ever sang for food. A loving memory of Beba, the originator of the pigeon slaying industry and just a cat with an impeccable taste in humans. Twee Guy, she's napping in a bear place now. Me Guy, or Maggie, silly ball of energy smarter than all of us. Left us too soon. Donnie, fearless king, ruler of his domain, a big in, as big in heart as he was in volume. Gina, repeatedly killing things in the afterlife, but with love. There's a cat there. Zyra, destroyer of dreams. Katya, she was a very, a very curious cat. Zuko, persistent door scratcher and lap warmer. Luli, we found you as a, in a <clears throat> we found you as a tiny street fighter, and you grew up to be our best friend. Smart, fearless, and loving. Sausage, her beautiful gaze is upon me, and her presence give, gives me comfort. Smetana, white as sour cream, soft as cottage tea, cottage cheese. Pierce, soaking in the desert sun. Danny, I didn't mind you eating my chips. Smudge, destroyer of strawberries, master of play, expert napper. And we can, of course, pet the kitty. Yes, I am going to read all the cat terminals. I love cats. Ginger, destroyer of carpets, devourer of food, connoisseur of cuddles. 
Pepper, sp spy in former life, consistently monitoring all things from the shadows. Expert arguer. Foxy, even the foxiest among us, eventually have to face the hounds. Eyeball, psych, psycho, she's of many names, a nightmare and a soulmate to Jakar. If I lose all else, may I never forget her. As Asriel, we rescued you, then you rescued us. Earl, beloved streamer and accomplished typist. Finn, a typical Leo, he liked attention, delicately wrapping his tail around his paw and sleeping in awkward positions. Legend, a wee boy who lived up to his name. Lily, thank you for getting your hair everywhere. Evie, beautiful on the outside, only. Dipstick, he was a real cat, if you know what I mean. Flux and void, in calm our love was filled, in play laughter abounded, in war the fragile shattered. Paddington, may you find many cuddles and carpets to pee on wherever you may be. Much love, KNS. Worf, in a different world, <clears throat> in different worlds, but never part. Best friends forever, a cosmic work of art. Lucy, you came to me, and ever since then my life has been brighter, my number one. Norma Jean. Norma Jean, your original father passed away and I took you in. You were scared, but now I hope you're happy. Bitsy, you were taken from us too soon. I miss you more and more every day. Sweet dreams, baby. One kind of amusing thing, though, is Worf here. The text is clearly, like, you know, kind of space-related in different worlds, a cosmic work of art. Which, the person who wrote this for the cat, I mean, is obviously referencing the fact the cat's name is Worf, a Star Trek character. But in-universe, that also kind of implies that these robots attribute space-related, you know, stuff, jargon, to the name Worf. Dana and Fox, the truth is out there. Love you, means. Dick Cheney, for a creature with so much fur, you were always trying to keep warm with oversized hats. Cooper, the court jester of my heart. Chewy, music is supposed to soothe the savage beast, but you were different. Mister, your ability to relax was unparalleled. Dom, I was always so glad that you never grew into your ears. Stanley Biscuits, to the best neighbor I ever knew. Stanley Biscuits, I miss you every day. Kipper B. Moistein. Here lies a cat who was devious. His cunning ways were quite mischievous, but we loved him all the same. One more. Luna, her name is Luna. She smells like tuna. Saffron and Cyan, may you hunt forever. Arrow, never stop screaming. To Lena, my best friend, who has always been the sunshine of my life. Ripley and Smaug, sun sleepers, moth hunters, our favorite beast. Sir, you were such a gentleman, and I miss you dearly. Lilu, you were such a diva and always judged me with those your stares, but you were a furry sweetheart underneath it. Oh, Misty Darling. Senya, your best magic sausage in the world. Can't wait to see you again someday. Jazzy and Gaia, the, to the most gentle and loving cats one could ask for. Jenny, did not like to be held by the unworthy. Yeah, there's a uh, you know, founder in Milton. I am glad that the cat ending is canon. This is a museum. I don't think I talked to you. Oh yet. wow! It's you! You're 1K, the incarnation of the goal. Man, this is exciting. This is more exciting than I thought it would be. How are you? What does it feel like? Do you know where the founder is? Do you know who Prometheus is? Can you tell me what to do with my life? 
So you're like the first one to actually treat me like a celebrity. Hold on, one question at a time. Sorry, it's just such an honor to meet you, you know? Hey, can I have your digital signature? I have the Mayor, Rand, Linux, Kaneda, and all of the first companions. Except Yemo and Sarabai, of course. Uh, I'm just a normal citizen. No need to be so modest. You're one, Kate. The one we've all been waiting for. But I understand. The greatest heroes are always humble. Hey, can I ask you a question? Just one question, I promise. All right. I used to make the prefab wall parts that we used to build living quarters. Got good at it, too. But now that the goal is complete, I don't know what to do with myself. So I asked the wisest people in town. The mayor told me I should do whatever the city needs most. Helga said I should do whatever makes me happy. I think that's what she meant anyway. And Cornelius told me I need to figure out who and what I'm invested in. You're the culmination of the Founder's will. Tell me, what should I do? So we're seeing like, you know, kind of sacrifice for the greater good, do what makes you happy. <laughs> I was literally just born, I'm the last person you should be on. Did you ask Byron? Byron said that if I give the city what it needs, the city should also give me what I need. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, say listen to Cornelius. You need to figure out what your connection to the city is. Thank you for the advice, 1K. It means a lot. Your biggest fan. Tell him what to do with his life. Or not. So that's the museum. That might still be part of the museum, so no reason to be going there. Anything interesting here? Alright then, I'll, I'll just leave. You know, don't want me part of your conversation in the Friends of New Jerusalem gazebo. Dicks. like an achievement for going into the water. Sign our petition for public referendum. New Jerusalem needs new form of energy generation. Hello, 1K. Welcome to New Jerusalem. I know you've just had a big moment with the apparition at the dam and all that, but can I have a second of your time? Sure thing, homie. I'm collecting signatures to call for a public referendum on the city's energy crisis. Currently, the city runs on hydroelectric power from the dam, plus a handful of geriatric generators and some unreliable solar panels, none of which is enough to even cover our basic needs. And if anything fails, we'll be on the brink of extinction in a matter of days. What do you propose? We need to investigate new sources of reliable baseline power. We need to invest time and resources into functional, real-world solutions that serve human needs. What do you think make of Prometheus? Byron's been advocating exploring that island for some time, and obviously he's right. Something very strange is going on there, and it's gonna start affecting us. Tell me more about Byron. In all honesty, I think Byron is the smartest, most visionary person in this city. He's everything we need, and I don't understand why he won't run for mayor. Do you work at the dam? 
No, I help run the public transit system, but I witness the impact of the city's power problems every day. We can't just wish them away. Why a referendum and not an election? Oh, an election would be good too, but I believe that we need more direct democratic control over the affairs of the city. Yeah, sure, I'll sign. Thanks, 1K. I don't know if this petition will really accomplish anything by itself, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything. Have fun. Provide your digital signature to someone. Guess I could have done that for the fanboy as well. Yeah, I think I have explored pretty much everything to explore in the city. Probably not the most interesting episode of the Let's Play, considering that it was mostly just me going through the museum and reading stuff. Oh wait, there's still this guy. 1K, you strayed far. Well, that gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. You mean the dome? Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. What's a dome for? It has two purposes. To protect New Jerusalem from the world, and to protect the world from New Jerusalem. Doesn't building this huge dome consume too many resources? Does the world really yeah, does the world really need protecting from us? That's what the founder taught us. One city may not seem like much, but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment. The consequences are still with us even more than a thousand years later. Doesn't building this huge dome consume too many resources seems antithetical to the goal? You're right. I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. Bunch of tilted isolationists? When is this dome going to be complete? At this rate? I'm not sure. Maybe another decade or two. See ya. environmental engineering you've done here is pretty nice. Very comfy sort of beach settings, palm trees, pigeons, kitty cats. Oh, so there's some things here. A printed edition of the complete works of Stratton of Stegeria, the materialist philosopher who defined the Talus Principle, edited by Ephansios T. Huber. Now this is actually a fictional person that the developers came up with and made a website about prior to the first game's release. A simple utensil used to transport nutrients to an ancient human's mouth often found in conjunction with a, quote, knife and a, quote, spoon. Humans invented complex ma <clears throat> magnification devices in order to better understand the component parts of the world they inhabited. This led to major discoveries in biology, physics, philosophy, and many other fields. Uh, microscope. The ancient human mastication apparatus required frequent maintenance. This device is theorized to be an advanced electrical tool for this purpose, although some scholars maintain that 
its actual use was ritualistic and intended to mark the sunrise and sunset. An ancient human projectile weapon used in hunting, warfare, law enforcement, crime, and personal protection. Produced en masse and used around the world, on average, ancient humans killed hundreds of times the population of New Jerusalem per year. And we got really damn good at it. A jigsaw puzzle. Ancient humans derived meaning and enjoyment from problem-solving activities, as noted by the progenitor. While the item on display was created for small children, ancient humans of all ages voluntarily engaged in such activities. <clears throat> what the fuck is that? Seriously, what the founder... What the founder was that thing in the sky? We all saw that, right? I didn't accidentally turn on sleep mode while Herman was talking, did I? No, we all saw it. Can confirm. I believe it was a sign from the founder. What else could it be on this day of all days? Pretty incoherent for a sign. It didn't finish whatever it was trying to say. What does the founder have energy in- What does the founder have energy insufficiency problems too? The Founder works in mysterious ways. Well, I don't think it was a sign. Out of the mouth of babes. How could such a remarkable display of unimagined powers not be a sign? It's something, but not necessarily the Founder. Sounds reasonable enough to me. Something weird is going on for sure, but what? We'll have to see. Riddles and puzzles are the foundation of our journey, so it begins. Perhaps so too will continue. <clears throat> I know all of you have been looking forward to playing the winners of the biannual Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition. Now in its 312th edition at the Gehenna Memorial uh, Pavilion, unfortunately due to our new power management and distribution plan, the pavilion will have to remain closed a, a little longer. Thanks for your patience. This is disappointing. Would have been great to have them ready for completion day. We all have to make sacrifices to stay true to the founder's vision. Those text adventures are the only thing that breaks me out of the monotony. Why prioritize this pointless completion day celebration over an exhibition that people actually care about? Art is one of the last things we actually still do. Is that going out the window as well now? Debate regarding our power management plan is definitely welcome and you will all be able to express yourselves in the next election. election. But this thread was just meant as an announcement. I apologize for enabling replies to begin with. Happy completion day, 1K. Oh, I see. This is like the conversations that I've had. Yeah, alright, I get it now. There's research. <clears throat> Alcatraz. Chapter 5 of Winkington's Cat. Another cat visited strange countries. These are the standard operating procedures for expositions or expeditions, just uploading them to remind Byron, who will probably ignore them anyway, attaching a picture from an ancient book to get his attention. 1. Maintain the ideals of the Founder and the Goal. Prioritize the well-being of the expedition members over mission completion. One expedition member to stay by the vehicle at all times. Expedition leaders should refrain from participating in high-risk activities. Minimize vehicle use to conserve fuel, prioritize observation over interference, in case of emergency, return to New Jerusalem at once. 
I mean, the whole power thing seems to be like kind of a microcosm of what human beings were arguably going through. The island. The island is designated TTP slash two was or dash two was first noted during the return journey from a scouting expedition which was diverted from its intended path due to an unexpected weather front. Long range scans indicate the presence of large artificial structures and also returned highly unusual energy readings. The matter was not investigated further. In ancient times, the northern part of the island was home to several large settlements, but rising sea levels have obliterated these and flooded the northern lowlands. The south, in stark contrast, seems to be harsh and a lifeless desert. Our intended base camp is near the origin of the energy readings, in the temperate center of the island. And something written in Greek, I presume, just testing the system to see if it works properly this time so we don't have another incident, incident like when Pelengrio uploaded his poetry to the public blog. Classic Pelengrio. Jeremy real quick. Hello, 1K. This expedition is taking a lot of our resources. I'm really not sure it's a good idea. But what's done is done. So I have a lot of work to get on with. Who are you? I'm the mayor's chief aide. What do you do? All the things no one else wants to do. Polling the citizenry, implementing new policies, recording decisions, fielding questions people could answer elsewhere. What do you make of recent events? Our goal as custodians of New Jerusalem is survival and stability. Our ancestors proved human civilization is precarious. This apparition in the sky, and now your expedition to its supposed source, these are more precarious than stable. I don't like it. What do you want? For our people to be happy with what we have. Some of us may have an adventurous spirit, but that can never be sated. What matters to me is having my loved ones around me, safe and secure. Had to take the dog for a walk? What do you think of me? You represent the completion of the goal. I'm proud of what we've achieved, and the restraint we show in not pushing ourselves further. Well, that's the end of that. So I think I'll wrap things up here. We've uh, both done quite a bit and made no, almost no progress at all. Going through the prologue, then going through the city. There are some things that are getting me thinking, like the fact that the founder valued Milton so much that she named her cat after Helm, which then leads to the kind of cynical disposition she took where it's a thousand people, no more, don't try to explore, so on and so forth. But even with the harsh limitations on population size, there's still issues at hand, grave power issues that aren't going to solve themselves, and thus might require exploration. But then like, who is this Prometheus guy, and this Pandora girl who seems to be uh, bounding Helm or binding Helm? Because in the Greek myth, it wasn't Pandora who chained Prometheus to a rock, it was Zeus. So is he going to show himself, or is there only room for one divine figure in Talos Principle 2, Elohim? Who evidently still lives inside of everyone, along with Milton. 
Well, maybe we'll discover something about that in the next episode. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the video that gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. Take care.